that I was sleeping and I woke up into a panic attack and I had no idea what the hell was happening to me. The reason that I was just freaking out was that I thought I wasn't going to be able to pay for my international baccalaureate exams. They were really expensive, like over a thousand dollars, and I thought that I was going to have to drop out of this program that I absolutely love doing, and so it was absolutely devastating to experience my first panic attack of all time over money, and how it just, it puts you in survival mode. Instead of being able to thrive, you're just surviving, and that's what it's like to stress about money. and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I wanted to talk about money mindset. And the reason that this is so important is that money is something that affects what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Even if you weren't encouraged to talk about money in your childhood, it still is something that contributed to how you see it now. You might not feel comfortable talking about it. You might want to you know, ignore your bank account or not open up your bills, which I've been in that position before too. The very first step is to journal and ask yourself, what have I learned and absorbed about money? So I wanted to include the word absorbed here because like I said before, you may not have been taught to talk about money. So it's really important that you look at that and you don't judge yourself and you don't judge your parents and you don't judge your situation, just let it out. And you can make this a combination of bullet points and full on sentences or just stream of consciousness, right? But there's, I promise you, a lot that you haven't really even considered that has gone into creating your money mindset and how you see money today. You could still be taught that people who have money or the ultra rich or are just immoral people and that's another association that I want you to get familiar with you know what were you taught about people who are wealthy and that's where you need to investigate your subconscious beliefs around money because if on one hand you're saying that it'd be great to have it but then on the other hand you are demonizing people who are living that life that you say that you want there's gonna be something stopping you from getting there because you're allowing yourself to believe that it's evil or unethical or immoral or that it's just not likely for you to get there and again we all have some level of this something else that i just kind of wanted to say about the idea of you know rich people are unethical is just that any person can be unethical there are plenty of people without money that are unethical there are plenty of people that are poor or struggling that are also unethical so it's really just about you know separating those ideas and realizing that money is just a concept money is just a currency that we all need to use whether you like it or not really examine this and then step number two is to use the bullet points and what you've journaled and explore that to define your new money mantras that will help you be more in tune with how you actually want to feel how you actually want to see money and how you want to believe that it about the role that it plays in your life for example you know money is a renewable resource or every time you spend money saying there's more where that came from even saying i attract money easily is a great money mantra to have and again this always goes back to affirmations and thoughts versus beliefs i recently actually just wrote an instagram caption about this and it was about how your thoughts affect your beliefs and your beliefs affect your habits and your habits and actions create the reality that's around you right so sometimes we do need to take that leap of faith and say look i know i'm not a successful musician yet but i'm going to get there it's important with money to apply that same rule you know you might have to believe in something that isn't right in front of you yet to help you create the habits and the actions that you need to then make that your reality so it's important to come up with these mantras and figure out you know what exactly it is that you want do you want to just be more comfortable with having money so that when you have it you don't just spend it when we make money but our money mindset is in, in the right place you know, we can end up just spending money or not using it wisely or just kind of seeing it all go away because we're used to not having any money. And I've been in the same boat, you know, for a lot of like my college career, I had like maybe $20 in my bank account. I didn't have a lot of money. The second that I had a little bit of money, I would have to use it for books or for like one fun thing, going out to dinner once or whatever. And then I would just be back to, you know, zero, going from paycheck to paycheck. And 
as soon as I graduated and I started making more money, you know, in some ways I was responsible because I was putting a large sum of that towards my debt and student loans and things like that. And I was able to pay a lot of that off. But at the same time, I was not used to having money sitting in my account. Like I didn't know what that felt like. So even if I was, you know, distributing it to these other accounts and to student loans and things like that, I needed to also get comfortable with the idea of seeing money in my account and knowing that it was going to be there and just being used to that and obviously I had when I had a full-time job I was making way more than when I was working 10 hours a week at my campus library in college right so there are huge jumps that you might make in your income at different points in your life but again if you're not comfortable with that money you're not going to be responsible with it so at this point you might be asking okay so i can think great about money but how does that help me because i still have the same job and you know this isn't going to change my situation like yeah i feel better about money but then what this comes back to the idea of being able to invest being able to push yourself to apply for better jobs because you then feel like you're deserving of a higher salary or if you don't have you know a college degree or a certain certification or a certain qualification that you need you can finally feel like you're worth saving up or maybe even taking out a personal loan or maybe taking out like a small amount of student loans and I'm not talking about like getting yourself into six-figure debt if that's just not realistic for you but even things like being a real estate agent or things that have a lot a lot less barrier to entry you don't need to go to like a four-year school but you need to take some tests and you need to take some classes and you need to invest a little bit into starting off that career path that you want or even if you're pursuing art or music the supplies that you you need for that a software that you might need on your computer all these things are little investments that you can make to get yourself to the next place so once you've been able to shift that perspective about money and you are willing to accept more in your life and you are positive that it is going to come to you it's easier to separate yourself from little bits of money and make healthier decisions because we've all been in that place where we like don't even realize where our money's gone and then we look in our bank account and we see like taco bell mcdonald's chipotle like all these different things that we spent like 30 dollars here 25 dollars here 16 dollars here and after you know a few weeks of that it adds up into a few hundred dollars and i'm not trying to get you to police every small transaction i'm not saying that you can't you know enjoy like a coffee or go out to dinner every once in a while you can do those things but it's important that you are also able to see your money as a tool to get you to the next level if you want to and to feel that you deserve that next level or that next higher salary or whatever it is to help you do something that's more sustainable and when you do see money that way and you say okay i need 500 dollars to take this one test that i need so i can be licensed in whatever it is that i want to do when you have those kinds of specific goals you're able to actually value the little bit of money that you have coming in and pull that together and like get excited about the fact that you get to spend it on something that is more meaningful to you. Many people talk about, you know, it's easier to save money when you're making more money. And of course that makes sense. Like a higher salary is going to give you more leeway to pay for these other things. But we all know people, or at least I do, where they're making a lot more money and they still don't really know how to manage it or use it. So they end up, you know, spending like, a thousand or two thousand dollars on a vacation going out on like shopping sprees going out to eat every single day because they feel that they can and at the end of the month they're still living paycheck to paycheck like you can live a better lifestyle but still be depending on every single check and my fourth tip just kind of elaborates on this as well so it's important to see where you can be more qualified making those small decisions will really allow you to be able to spend in order to make more money or keep more of the money that you're making later on so you have to push yourself to believe that these opportunities for you to do that are out there you don't have to be like a multi-millionaire to have a happy relationship with money i just want you to know that while there are some very realistic you know sides to money and that money isn't going to just magically appear in front of you it still starts with changing your mindset and being able to look at the opportunities that you have. I mean, even in college, I didn't have money for three, $400 books and all of my classes were a month long and then they would be over and we'd move on to the next class. So before my 
first class was over, I would email my professor for the next class that I had coming up, figure out all the books that I needed, go to the library, look at the interlibrary loan and see what I could, you know, get from there. I would photocopy the pages if I had to. I had to ask some of my friends if we could share books or if I could copy their pages. You know, there were a lot of things that I had to do because I just couldn't afford the basics while everyone else around me was going on vacations every month and enjoying these school breaks and studying abroad and doing all these things that I just didn't felt, feel like I could do. I found those opportunities to make things possible for myself because my priority was being educated. I wasn't the perfect student, but I still cared enough to go through all of that and not let that stop me. So that's what I'm trying to tell you is that there are opportunities everywhere. If you have a will, you're going to find a way. So be that will, be that motivation, be that driven person that I know that you can be and just do anything that it takes to get yourself to that next level. And every job that I've had, you know, since college and my first job that allowed me to have that stable income wouldn't have been possible without a college degree. So, you know, it, I'm not saying that you need to have a degree, but there are things that you can do where investing in, your, in yourself really pays off and gives you that stability. And it's the same thing with opportunities. If you keep sitting here and telling yourself that there are no opportunities, you're way less likely to find them than if you create opportunities or if you put yourself out there and start connecting with people or start asking around or start joining you know, a Facebook group or some sort of networking event in the area. There's some of those that are free, even things like Toastmasters and things like that are free to join and are a great way for you know, networking and making those connections that can help you get in front of more people or that can help you start seeing opportunities where you didn't think that there were any. Like there's so many different things that you can do in this day and age that help bring in a little bit of extra money. And it doesn't have to be something like YouTube, which takes a lot of time from the start until you start making that. Things like Uber and Grubhub and other freelance work, dog sitting, house sitting, babysitting, tutoring. There's so many different things that you can do that will allow you to bring in just that little bit extra and from there you can save just what you made from that extra money to go to that new opportunity that you have even if it takes a few months or even if it takes a whole year to get yourself to that point and if there is an opportunity that's only coming around you know once in a lifetime then you know you can consider if it's worth you know taking out a small personal loan or a small student loan in order to do that but of course when it comes to taking out loans or comes to kind of accruing some of that debt make sure that it's worth it you know with going to grad school and things like that make sure that the job that you would be able to get or that degree that you have will allow you to get the kind of jobs that will help you really pay off the amount of debt that you're about to take in um, even if it's taking a few online courses or even starting with something like Skillshare which is you know ten dollars a month that allows you to get some sort of exposure to these different fields that will help you discover what you're interested in and then that can help you figure out if you want to take that seriously enough to get a degree in it. Like there's a lot of baby steps that you can take that are free or have a very minimal cost that will then allow you to see more opportunities. But it's all about having that shift in perspective in order to get to that point. Like I grew up around a lot of negative money experiences and I grew up feeling like money was stressful and in college like I had like hospital bills almost sent to collections a couple of times because I didn't want to check my bank account I didn't want to check my mail I didn't want to make those annoying phone calls to people deciding on what my payment schedule is going to be I didn't want to deal with any of that and I just let that pile sit there and I let that kind of voice and that stress just accumulate we've all been there but just because you're there now doesn't mean that you can't switch that around and create that positive mentality again it takes that first step in believing in something that you can't quite see yet in order to make it happen let me know what your concerns are if you agree if you don't agree how you feel about money in general let me know in the comments below you guys know that i love to hear from you and just a quick reminder i did recently launch a podcast that i am so excited about so I'll leave the links to that in the description as well i do also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions as a life coach and i will leave the link to fill out a form to sign up for that in the description as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you did enjoy this video and you want to get notified of more coming up like it. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, I really, really appreciate you guys. Happy healing! <laughs>